Let's stand uh, very quickly just to have a word of prayer. <coughs> Let us pray. Heavenly <coughs> Father, Lord, we're so thankful for you to allow us to be here once again in your house of prayer. We ask that everything be said and done be pleasing to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we place your service in your hands. From the first word to the last word, from the first note in the song to the last note. We surrender ourselves, myself to you, Lord. And we place ourselves in your hands once again, as I said. God bless you and everybody. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Um, let us start um, the first worship song with Higher Ground. Pressing on the upward way, new heights I gain in every day. My 
heavenly home is bright and fair, I feel like traveling on. Nor pain nor death can enter in, I feel like traveling on. Yes, I feel like traveling on. I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair. Sunday, no, the 29th. We have a, a no, that's two weeks from, from today. We have guests, right? Alex, maybe you tell us uh, uh, at the end of the service to make announcements. And, uh, and then God is good. Uh, little by little, the uh, walls are falling down. And we'll talk about that later. You have a, a need that's raise your hand when we come to the Lord in prayer. Every Father, God, thank you for everything. Everybody here that has a need, Lord, uh, we ask you that you, I ask you, Lord, that you answer according to their need, according to their faith. Lord, you have said, Lord Jesus, your faith has healed you. Your faith has saved you. Both words come to, down to one word, healing or salvation. You're the Savior, the, you're the healer. Everything's under the atonement. We want to thank you for answering our needs. We want to answer you. Thank you beforehand for what you're going to do. And for you said you would do it. Now we ask you to bless the offering tonight to its intended purpose. Any tithings comes in, same thing, Lord, to the intended purpose. Blessed Father, we ask and pray to you in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's sing another one of these. Yeah. I'll say it in the right way. The infectious is one of those infectious songs. Come and go with me to my father's house. Yeah. Come and go with me to my Father's house, to my Father's house, to my Father's house, yes, come and go with me, to my Father's house. 
just kicked in right now and there's, there's how many nine there I'm not sure how many there is in my Galatians 5 love joy peace long suffering gentleness meekness patience faith uh, I, I don't know how many I, I, I've been trying to memorize that scripture and I get the word so no, no. that'd be beautiful to sing that song so Amen. Just, Amen. we could put let our hair down as they say that. Amen. just relax <laughs> just sing to the Lord that Amen. song um, that was our special, so <laughs> hope you joined in. We're going to sing Amazing Grace now and open up the pulpit here for Brother Seven to bring the word tonight. You ready to receive something awesome? Well, you got it this morning, but now it's going to get awesomer. Okay. Uh, we're going to hear Brother Seven and uh, let's sing Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now. Lord, giving you thanks, giving you honor, giving you glory. Lord, we thank you for continuing to work with us, Lord Jesus, never forsaking us, Lord, and speaking to us in such a tremendous manner, Lord. Lord, may the, those that have a need receive what they have needed for. And Lord, may those that are watching, Lord, that need oil, Lord Jesus, may they receive that oil, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask all things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Uh, something tremendous. <laughs> I know what tremendously happened today. Uh, it, nothing happens out of coincidence. I believe God is in control. And we're going to push. We're going to go ahead and push. Start. Um, we know right now that everybody's having a jubilee. Everybody's yelling, screaming, and 
high-fiving each other right now. Um, I guess there's a couple football games right now, but we, we're right here and, and we're high-fiving the Holy Spirit. We're getting high-fived by the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Raise our hands and we're like, thank you, Lord. Yeah. And we're praising God and hearing thank from you, Him. Um, wow. Something tremendous happened today. It's never happened. It probably has, but um, I was so anxious to get you here to to uh, to to church and uh, that I bit my lip. Wow. And my wife, my wife, told me, "Calm down, calm down." I said, "What?" I said, "And I'm feeling a tremendous." Um, I'll tell you what happened. I left my dad's house with my portion of food. Okay, <laughs> I had some soup. Then I walked right into a man, and 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 I guess he came. This is one of my brother's friends. He came to have get a haircut. Yeah. And I went out there and I stopped and I said, I said hello. And he goes hello. I says, uh, I says you waiting for my brother? And he goes, oh yeah. Um, uh, you waiting for my brother Alex? He goes yes. And he goes, I I'm come here for a haircut. And by the time something, I was like. Uh, you know you should take advantage of that very moment. Man. I says, uh, and then and I just started to walk by that man, and I stopped, and because there was something about him, I said, "Am I about to start to walk away from one of God's children?" Man. And I don't even know it. And I stopped and I turned around and said, "What is your name?" He says, "His name is Joe." Man. I said, "Joe." That's it. My name is Estelle. I'm, I'm the little brother. I says, and then all right, when I'm about to start speaking to him, and then my my brother comes out. Yeah, he doesn't want to go in the backyard. There's dogs and this and that, and and he gets a little a little jailhouse kind of uh, the the jailhouse kicks into him yes. and yeah. and the antics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And I said, I said, just let Dad know. I'm gonna get into the message. I said, if we go over, praise God, man, man, it, something's good is gonna happen. It already happened, and it's in the in the movie. Right. And, and, and when I shook his hand, my heart, there's something in my heart. It's just like he jump started. There's something that when, when you start running into walls or something, you start to say nobody wants to hear it. Nobody wants to hear anything. But when you shake somebody's hand and he's looking at you and he can barely look at you, he says, yeah. but he's, yes. and when you see a man who's tired, I yeah. saw that he was tired. Yeah. My name is Joe. I came for a haircut. Then he started just opening up. I, I live in Chandler. I used to live around here. I live in Chandler, but I'm here for a haircut. And, and right when I'm about to start to open up, give, we started kind of reciprocating and, yes, yes. And, and and start talking about, there comes the antics. Well, I said, well, Alito, just give him a haircut under the carport. There is a plug there. Go ahead and let that know. Mm. And then the guy was, okay, oh, that sounds good. He was all with it. I said, he wouldn't want it. He goes, yeah, I'm trying to take them into the backyard. But the dogs were out there. <laughs> we have dogs. And thank God for those dogs. And there are people that, that they're, they're, doesn't God have dogs too? Guard dogs? <laughs> if you're acting up and they'll give you a little nip. Man. He has sheep dogs. Yeah. He says, you start to stray, he comes over there and starts to get at your heel. So Man. you can start walking back into the fold. Mm. Wow. So, I had a message. Man. I was ready to go. God's eye. That's what I was going to preach. I went home, took a nap, and I put the, 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 the message on, relaxing, start, and I'm being stirred. I'm being stirred. Man. Something's stirring me. And I got up, I said, I should have stopped and I should have told my brother to calm down. I wanted to have a moment with him because a man who could barely look at, his, look at you. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that I'm a holy man. No. I'm not saying I'm almighty God and he had to look away. But when a man, a stranger, can, and you see that the man is tired. Man. And you go to shake his hand and just say, hey, my name is this. And you're responding, your name is Joe. Yeah. I was going to say, that's an awesome name. Man. I have an Uncle Joe who just passed away and that's how I was going to go into man. it. And I would say, but my name is Estelan. I'm the little big brother. <laughs> I went like that. And he just looked at me. But when he was like this, I saw a man who was willing and willing. I knew I could have hooked him for the Lord that it was tired. So the Lord had put a stirring on me. Horrible. I got up, stayed on the side of the bed, and, then, and I just started meditating. I said, Lord, Lord. 
And then I went to my office. I said, I got to read. I opened it up and this is how it comes. And I was reading God's eye. And the first things that I started to read with him, two lines, God looks. And I was like, wow, you must have an eye in order to look. Yes. And so I was like, that's it. That's it. Change it. So I ran real quick, hurry up. And within 30 minutes, I said, we're going to be late. I started getting all nervous, but I bit my lip. Man. I said, this, is, this has got to happen. It's for somebody out there. Man. It's for somebody here. Yeah. It's whosoever, whosoever will. Man. The circumcision of the heart. Number two, come to me and I will give you rest. And that struck me. I said, this man is in need of rest. I said, not only that man, but my brother is in need of rest. You won't have to act like you're still in the jail, jail the yard. That you'll be in the fold. The scripture is Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Wow. And I will give you rest. Yeah. If I would have told him that right there, I'm sure enough he would have collapsed in my arms. My I knew it, and I didn't take advantage. And I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I said, for, but you know how when everybody says, we got to go, we got to go take a nap. Here's this. No excuses. Wow. Mm. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Man. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Man. People just don't realize how much their souls need to rest. Uh, they continue to work and move their bodies and their spirits. Or they, I don't know what moves them. Uh, they get up and they medicate themselves and they do whatever they have to do just to make it through the same day. Uh, and when the day is over, they're so exhausted. Uh, and yet they repeat and they repeat. Right. Uh, how Brother Ernie says they, how they do push-ups and push-ups. I have to work. I have to work. Uh, There's no more work with Jesus Christ. Uh, but uh, there is another work. You will do His work. Amen. Amen. You will be yoked up with Him. Amen. <laughs> I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, Amen. and my burden is light. Amen. It is way lighter than the burden that we, we carry in this world. People just don't understand. Amen. And I was trying, I hope they can read it. I hope they'll be able to see it, but I was pressed for time. It was, this happened within 20, 30 minutes. I, 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 my computer wasn't moving fast enough. Wow. Right. And I had to do this or fellowship. Now he said, take a red heifer. How did you ever notice scientifically you take something real, real red and look through red to red and it looks white. Did you ever know that? Red through red looks white. And so God knowing that man was a sinner by nature, knowing that he was wrong to begin with, he made a preparation of the shed blood. And God, looking through the blood of the Lord Jesus, sees a red sinner, white as snow. You have no more sin. When God looks through, this is what I, I saw, and I was like, my God. I said, when God looks through the blood of Christ, no matter what you have done, how much sin you have committed, what have you done, if the blood of Christ has been applied to your heart, God sees you perfect. Man, yeah. That was so beautiful. And, that, and that's the first words I, I, I saw. And I said, oh my God. Man. And I started looking at me and I said, Stalin, I says, and I said, what a perfect moment to tell that man, man that the word of God, the blood of Jesus Christ, that no, no matter what has happened, that God, are you willing to be looked at perfectly? If somebody, if you told somebody like that, says, well, there is nobody perfect. Ah, but there is one that is perfect. That is man, Jesus man, Christ. Man. That's yes, sir. And under his blood, you are perfect. Listen, yeah. 
Yes. I'll tell you a little secret. Right. I wanted to say yes. that so yes. those that are watching, yes. Yes. because that are that, right. so there's some people that go like this. They only want. To, I'm going to reveal a mystery that the prophet has <laughs> has spoken about. Right. But then this is the same message, and I said, wait a minute. I'm going to tell you a little secret. Right. So people will start seeing a secret. Yes. Watch all the views start blowing up. Yeah. Let's learn a secret. There is a secret. Right. Right. There are many secrets, but there's one great secret that people are still right. missing. Right. You must be born again. Right. That secret, they still ignore it. But it's a secret. Right. It's a mystery. Right. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a secret. They say, well, but some people think that oh, I'm going to hold that secret. I'm hiding it as a secret. I have never been born again, but uh, you sure like to walk around with the Bible. <laughs> Our brother Ernie is pulling around. God bless you, brother. The message of the hour. <laughs> Walking around and going, oink, oink, oink. Not even born again. Ah. They go from church to church and start sowing the seed of discrepancy just ah. to see if they can get some people out. Ah. They go in there to disturb the churches. Ah. Wow. Wow. Oh, I got it. And then when they leave them, then they go to another church. I tell you a little secret in a few minutes about divine healing and about things. Nah. I was like, wow, here's a secret. Nah. First thing, friends, is the preparation of the human heart. Wow. wow. Nah. You want something? You yeah. want to hear something? You want to learn something? You want to receive something? Nah. Let's talk about the preparation of the heart. Nah. Yes. Wow. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Nah. Thank you. Here a few days ago, I was up here in Chicago where old science used to say, man thinking in his heart. I'm going to read this because he can say it better than anybody else. Amen. All I'm going to do, that's why I'm such a, uh, I, I got to speak it. It's not me that's going to speak it. It's him that spoke it. I'm going to repeat what he spoke. Nah. It's so awesome. Nah. When I read it, I said, this has to be read. This has to be spoken. Yes, right, right. It's nah. awesome. Nah. Especially when he said, you want to know about a secret? Nah. Ah, it's the preparation of your heart. Nah, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. You can you can hear all the secrets and get it right in here intellectually and store it. Start walking around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do this. You can walk like a Christian, talk like a Christian, but if it ain't that Christian experience Man. to be Christ-like in the heart, Man. then it's for nothing. Man. You can memorize all the seals and every single thing and, and they walk around and say this and that. Oh, you're not a thunders. You're a thunders. You're a tent. You're not a tent. Uh, uh, let, let me tell you about the the I'm gonna tell you you're hearing about all of it right now. Wow. Like uh, like when we went the first time I I know I'm going off track. <laughs> but the first time I went out there on the field, yeah. and the first time I was confronted, I said, Man, is this what you guys go through? I was yeah. like, Wow, brother, 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 what do you think about the tent? Right. What about the tent? What do you think about the cloud? Well, and these people are and uh, some of them are not even born again. They're all messed up. Yeah. All messed up. What do you yeah. think about the return, brother? Tell me about the return. Yeah. And when I said, well, you want to hear about the thunders? Re return. I said, and the, and the returns? I said, return tonight. Man. Because I'm speaking about the return. Man, man. If you return tonight, then you're going to be concerned. Man. Okay? Then you want to know about the pools? It's when Jesus Christ pulls at your heart and pulls you through the blood of his own son. Man. Pulls you and makes you White as snow. Man, man. Oh, oh, getting shook up right there. They climb up. You want to know about the pools? I told you about the pools right there. Yes. Learn that one first, and then we'll go to the one, two, and three. Man. You want to know the tent? We are ready. We're in a tent right now. What do you think this tabernacle is? Man, man. We are in a tabernacle right now. Man. Tell me about the clouds. You want to know the clouds? We are clouds. The other day I was driving. I said, oh, how beautiful. Look at that. The rains. I said, that cloud is preaching a message, Lupita. She's like, what? What is he? What do you mean? Because there was only one cloud of sky of clouds that was raining in the distance. I said, you know what that rain is? That's the Holy Ghost. Wow. And then she goes, well, I don't understand it. And I said, and I said, look it. There's clouds here. There's a cloud here. But when all those clouds will gather with that one cloud that is raining, nah. you'll have a, such a tremendous outpouring of the Holy Spirit because those clouds, those are accumulus. There's yes. cirrus, yes. accumulus, and, and stratus. Nah. Oh, I remember something from Chiang Mai. 
And those accumulates to accumulate moisture. Amen. And then when they start to gather together, not only is it going to rain in one area, but there will be a tremendous outpouring. Amen. So when all of us can gather together with no, no strife wow. and unity, the tremendous outpouring of the Holy Ghost will come down and strike the seeds of Almighty God and bring forth of what was actually sown. Yes, sir. Man. And I was like, I'm seeing it in nature. That's why I'm on the third floor. I send you pictures in my morning. I'm on the third floor at my job. I'm looking at South Mountain. There's no noise. It's dark. The wind is blowing. I'm rejoicing because I'm outside and I'm seeing the gospel. Man. It's beautiful. It sets my heart on fire. Man. Where science used to say, man thinketh with his heart. Nonsense. The Bible is wrong. There's no mental faculties in the heart to think with. Man thinks with his head. Yes. With his mind. Right. But now they find out God was right. Man. See, man doesn't think with his head, his mind. Amen. He has, Amen. he's a dual, <laughs> dual personality. Amen. Look, look, person, in here is first, it is intellectual. Yes, sir. But they say that in the human heart, it isn't. It isn't in an animal heart. Right. It isn't in any other heart. Man. But right in the human heart Man. is a little compartment yeah. in the middle of the human heart that doesn't even have a blood cell in it. Man. But it's the occupation yeah. of the soul. Man. So man really thinks with his heart not with his head. Right. You could tell you could have a conversation with somebody and says, "Have you ever stole?" Uh, yes. And by three commandments, then they're they're not thinking with their head. They're researching in their spirit. They're like, "Yeah, yeah." And all of a sudden, when you see a tear start to drop the eye, that they're worthy of death, and they need to repent. Amen. It's because down here they're searching. They're searching. That's right. That's right. Amen. I'm wrong. Man. It wasn't up here with intellectual, well, you know, this and this and that. Oh, man. But when that intellectual faith becomes down into this little compartment, intellectual faith, yes. it becomes positive. Man. When does it become positive? When faith becomes positive down into this little compartment here yes, man. it becomes positive all those devils of hell can't move it man. that's right when it comes down there man. the sin question is settled man. remember that sin question yes. you just uh, on that day at Calvary hey man 30 times this week awesome Awesomer, awesomest. Man. The sin question. Like when Peter stood up at the day of Pentecost. You men of Israel with filthy hands have crucified Lord in Christ. The man approved of God. Man. Signs and wonders. And when, he said, and when they started to preach, he, the, it pierced their soul. It yes. pierced their heart. Man. The sin question was, what shall we do? Man. That was the sin question. Yes. What shall I do? Man. Thank yes. you, Lord. Amen. When he said, Hey, I'm the Lord that healeth thee. I like how he said, Hey, <laughs> I'm the Lord that healeth thee. Right. He has to get your attention sometimes right. that way. Yes. Hey. Yes. There's some people who are just uh, they're like, oh, you gotta, you gotta, oh, how you doing, sister? How you doing, brother? Hi, oh, God is good. He's good all the time. Oh, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you all through these years. And not once tell him, hey! Have you received have the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Have you settled the same question in your life? Man. Have you presented your children Man. that are not here? Yeah. And then you start to work them on. Oh, he's so rough. He's so rough. No more Pentecostal. I, I, you got to rank them sometimes. Yes. Man. Hey. 
I am the Lord that healeth thee. Yes. When that comes through the intellectual faith, faith dunks down into that little compartment. Yeah. I like how he explains it right there. Yes. When that intellectual faith dunks down into that little compartment. Man. There ain't enough doctors in Chicago to tell you or Phoenix man, tell you you're going to die. No sir. No indeedy. Man. And if they're really good, that's what God does. Man. He moves right in and takes that intellectual faith. I like this part. Man. And speaks it down into the human heart i almost went crazy I, I i think that's when i bit my lip when he takes that intellectual yes faith comes down into that compartment and speaks it Amen. awaken thou that sleepest Amen. awake Amen. Uh, yes. thank you jesus Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, sir. That's why it's important no. to be awake. Amen. God is calling you. He wants to give you what you have been praying for. But some people will miss it. Wow. He moves right in and takes the intellectual faith and speaks it down. And I started to go back and I said, oh, how beautiful. Adam, Adam, where art thou? He's Amen. speaking. He's speaking to the heart, nah. Adam, Adam, and then the man who was out there partying and smoking cigars and dancing on the floor, being a pool shark, walking by a church and hearing, Adam, Adam, wherefore art thou? And he stops and looks, because you need to stop and look. Nah. Hey, I'm the Lord God that healeth all thy diseases. Nah. What do you mean, hey? That word has, has attention. Hey, there's something for you. Yes, sir. Nah. Yes, sir. It has to get your attention. Hey, our dogma and our creed says this. Nah. <laughs> the word of God says this. Yes, man. Man. And speaks it down to the human heart. And when it comes into the heart, it becomes positive. That's where <clears throat> that God himself moves. <laughs> God himself moves into the human heart and makes that a positive thing. Right. Amen. When that faith comes out of the mind, it has to get out of the mind. I'm not pointing to my brain. There's a, the mind is the spirit. Right. That's why I said, therefore, my brethren, I, I, I beseech you to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right. Right. That's right. When that faith comes out of that mind into the human heart. Yes. Now, you see what I mean? Right. Now, under the shed blood, he said, take the heifer, three years old, and she must be red. And they'll take her out there. Yeah. The first thing, she must never have a yoke on her neck. Oh, I just love that. Now listen, this might burn or scorch or sizzle, but it's better to do that. It's better to do it just for a little while than to do it forever. Man. Basically, he's saying, but it's better to do it down there. Yes. Look, that heifer represented Christ. Man. And Christ was not yoked up with anything. Man. Hey, man, but was God alone? He didn't go to any denomination. He didn't go to the Sadducees. He didn't go to the Pharisees. He man. didn't go to the Herodians. He was God alone. Man. He came and he didn't associate with them. Yes, sir. Ooh, he was a, a wonder. <laughs> God alone. <laughs> wow. This heifer could not have a yoke upon her. Man. She must be without any yoke on her. And then she must be killed in the presence of the high priest. Man. And then when the high priest Aaron, seeing that the heifer was killed, Eliezer took the blood on his finger yes. and went and striped it on the door seven times Amen. up over the door of the tabernacle a public testimony Amen. then the heifer was taken and put in the fire and burned and burned up and then was took outside the court yes and this is where it also got me right here that's 
Court is in session. Right. Right. <laughs> hey, I was like, oh my goodness. Didn't God make us king and priests? Yes. So before the man, when the man was before us, I'm not there to judge him, but I'm there to offer him grace. Grace. Why? Because I freely received grace. Therefore, I'm going to give grace if he's willing. When you present the gospel, we are the priests. The blood of Jesus is upon us and our tabernacle. And then we come before him. And when he comes before him, he is actually there in the presence of court. Because God is in your heart. So therefore, he's before the judge. But you're not there to condemn him. You're there to give him grace. Yes. Grace. Amen. There's blood. There's the Holy Spirit for you. Are you willing? Amen. Oh. Amen. <laughs> the public testimony. Then the heifer was taken and put into the fire and burned. Burned up. And then it was took outside the court. Yes. Notice beautifully. Got to the got to hurry outside the court, and then I said, "Why? Wait a minute! Court for judgment starts at the house of God." Amen. And then I was like, yeah. "It's court." So that's exactly what I wish I had that picture. The outer court. When a sinner comes in, he is going to court because he's guilty of committing a sin. Yes, and then on the mercy seat is the judge. <laughs> Just like when you come into a court. I've been there many times before. Knees shaking, nerves. You're about to lose everything. You're about to be in a restroom throwing up because you're going to be, you're called to go to court. Yes. You know you did wrong, but you need somebody to stand in your stead. You need somebody to stand there and say, your honor. And so you need an advocate. He is your advocate, but you need somebody that will stand there. He did not mean to do it, but then when he's standing right next to you, he's your advocate. But then also, he is the judge. Oh, and he said, "Oh, what a what a horrible! I never had a chance." The devil saying, "I never had a chance." Look at how much he did. Look what I have. I got pictures and I got evidence, and he's worthy of death. Put him in my hands. But the advocate Jesus. He says, I have shed my blood for him. And the judge says, that's correct. And he gets his blood and blots out all that paperwork, that CR number, that, that CR number that all the prisoners know about. It's a court record. You come before him. I remember uh, one of the brothers says, you've got a case. Give your case to Jesus Christ. Right. Stop carrying that case around. Right. Everybody needs to still carry that case. Yeah. Oh, my poor back. Yeah. Oh, Oh, my hip. Oh, my mind. Oh, my brain. Oh, my family. Give those cases and those suitcases to God. Give that case and it will erase. You don't need to carry it no more. Man. Yes, sir. Outside the court. So, it was beautiful. So, court was being held. Then you brought with the lamb. They cut the lamb's throat. And then they they sprinkled it, and then they put the lamb in the fire because, and he put his hands on the lamb, and then transferred his his sin upon the lamb. Yes. But he still walked away with that that desire, yeah. that nature within him. Yes, yes. But now when Jesus right. Christ came, right. he shed his blood. He stood there. It is finished. You will not have to work anymore. You will not have to do this anymore. For the veil has re has re been rent. And reveal the mercy throne. The mercy seat. And I was like, oh, Lord Jesus. So court. That's why they call it the outer court. It's the court. So when you get a summons to come to the court, you have to come yes. and sit there. And then you wait your turn before the judge. Those that don't have the blood of Jesus, they're going to get a surprise. But God has prepared, uh, prepared for them. A way of escape. Outside the court, this was laid up in a clean place. For it was the waters of separation. Man. That when the blood, the waters of separation, the word of God, when it's being preached, it's been spoken. All those wrongs that you did, all those things that you carry, wow. start to get cut away by the word. You're getting washed. You're being separated. That's my 25 minutes there. The you're out of fellowship. Can't get prayer in it, uh, prayer answered. You're out of fellowship. Why? 
Can't get prayer answered. Right. Everything's black around you. Mm -hmm. Out of fellowship. Right. Come back to the word now. Yes. The word goes to cutting. Yes. Separates you. Right. Well, you ought not to do this. You ought not to do that. This is here. You don't have fellowship no more. You got yourself out of communion. Right. That's the waters of separation tells you wow. you should do. Huh. Then the first thing you know, the believer, after doing the next thing he did, he walked forward. Now, I, I'm still with the court. Man. I'm still with the court. Man. Let's read this. I'm good at this. He walked forward. Man. He walked forward. Then he's coming in. Now he's walking forward. Man. When he comes next to the door, he looks, he sees seven stripes Man. of blood, which means that the blood went before him. Man. Now he comes under the seven stripes, yes. in under the blood, Man. and then he has fellowship Man. with God. No fellowship nowhere else. And that whole thing in the tabernacle, Man. in the justification under the court. Man. So he comes to court Man. filthy, dirty, sinful, and, and, and to go to hell. Man. And in court, he has an advocate, yes. Jesus Christ, Man. and he's justified. Man. Thank you, Lord. Under the court. Man. Sanctification at the altar. Man. Man. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Man. And the Holy Spirit yes. behind the veil, Man. behind the veil, will come out and bring them in. Man. Man. And all a picture of Christ. Man, thank you, Lord. Now you know I went crazy, biting my lip. Oh, I gotta get here. I gotta get here. Man. So I can say it for somebody here or somebody who's watching. Man, yeah. No matter what you have done, Man. you come into the outer courts. Man. There's blood of preparation for you. Man. I can mention so many things. But what the youth are, 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 are dealing with, I don't care what kind of homosexual demon that you're dealing with. Yeah, the blood of Jesus Christ has been shed for you. Man. Man. There's many things right now that say, oh, I don't trust this. I've seen it in my family and I've seen this. One bad relationship. And then what you speak, you speak, but your negative thoughts, negative words, this man is this, this man is that, this man's good for nothing. And then your daughters hear you. They're going to say, well, men are a bunch of dogs. Wow. But then all of a sudden, the devil comes right next to your daughter and another woman. Man. Well, I will never wow. hurt you. Right, right, right. Because you're my girl, friend, friends. Next thing you know, they're holding hands together and they're kissing like that. And they're piercing their tongues and piercing their ears. Each piercing means something. It's yeah. sexual. It's sexual. Yes, sir. Man. And you don't believe it? Why did that pierce their tongue, man? Yes, it's that demon. Amen. They want to anoint you with sexuality. Yes, sir. There's nothing in a woman to be with another woman. There's nothing in another man to receive another man. That's right, brother. Thank you, Lord. Man. There's but there's nothing that will hinder the blood of Jesus Christ. Man. Right, man. I am a witness. Man. He will clean the filthiest. Didn't the Apostle Paul tell the Corinthians, at one time, you were effeminate. Yes, man. That's right. That's right. In the book, in the book of Corrections, the Corinthians, man, he man. told them because they were striking, but man. they were filled with the Holy Ghost, man, man. doing signs and wonders. Yes. But he had to bring them to remembrance. Remember, yes. you at one time yes. Yes. were homosexual. Yes. You were effeminate, man. but you did not know. You man. fell into a trap. And there's many traps because the fowler, the devil is a fowler. He's a trapper. He knows how to get you. Man, that's right. Amen. Nobody loves you. Well, I love you. Mm. 
And he'll send somebody. That's right. A boy who, a man or a boy who's vain, has full of vanity. You see it up there? I've seen it. I'm a witness. Yeah, they sat right there on the pulpit behind Brother Bernie and they preached. The next thing I know, I saw them. That's the word that I recognized them. Why is this? Why is why am I hearing all this? These these guys talking with high voices. I said, what is this garbage? I turned. I said, wait a minute. This guy was up in his tabernacle, amen, the, the word of God, sitting right at the top of the podium Man. behind Brother Bernie. Yes. It'll get you. That's right. It'll get anybody. Amen. You play around and act like a Christian, he'll get you. Amen. You better be behind the blood of Jesus Christ. Be baptized and born again. Man. If you're not born again, he'll get you. Yes, sir. That's right. Even if you're justified, you go out there justified, you go back still smoking, cussing, kissing your girlfriend and doing all that sorts of garbage. Right. You go out there living a sanctified life, he'll still get you. That's the most dangerous moment of your life when you're sanctified yeah. in sanctification. You must have a strong man there in, within the heart. Amen. Oh, so much power. So many... Such an entrance to the dimension of hell on the phone. That's right. One click away. Man. All that information, the yes. web. Yes. You get webbed in. Yes. Like Brother Bram says, Amen. you get webbed in. Amen. You think he didn't know about this? Yes, sir. With God's eyes, show him. Yes, sir. He was looking through God's eye. Man. And he saw it and he warned him. That you will get webbed in. And when you're webbed in, you're caught, you're stuck, you're you're, you're tread, a prisoner. Man. All right. There's such a prisoner that people will blow your brains up and you try to take the phone and say, It's me time, you and I. Hey, a demon. That's right. A demon. Man. All sorts of legions. That's right. You better try to take them. You look at them, zombie. They walk crosswalks. I don't know even how they do it. They'll cross the crosswalk without even looking once, twice. But everybody's got to watch out for them. That's right. Mm -hmm. Or they'll flip you off or do whatever because the car almost hit them. But if you ask them to surrender their phone, they every demon in hell that's within them will ex express itself. That's right. Ay, ay, ay. You talk to like my niece. I have a niece. She said something. Well, my friend's my wifey. Whoa. I got to talk to her. Don't you speak like that. Since she's your friend, don't ever say that she's my wifey. Wow. Mm. That's how it starts. Man. You speak those things. It's like when I first got my pierced, my earring pierced. Mm -hmm. We're over, but they can hear it. Mm -hmm. I went around with the ma ma uh, magnet earring wow. just to see what mama would catch. Just to see what daddy, daddy's working in Yuma. But I went around with the earring. Oh, I had a cross on it. I believe in Jesus. Uh. It has a cross in it. My. Oh, I get tattoos of an upside down cross. You know what that upside down cross? My. It's not because of Peter. Peter, they're saying that that's satanic. The denial of the cross. That's right. Denial of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. My. It's actually, it's actually satanic. That's right. How do you how do you tell your nieces, your niece and them? You can tattoo every cross on there. Why is it upside down? Oh, I don't know. Why? Don't you know you're denying Jesus Christ? That's right, brother. And that's satanic and Satan worshipers, they use that? That's right. Now you're under the control of that until you repent. Get that thing off and don't do another tattoo of an upside, a right side up cross. No, get that thing off or cover it up. Repent. In the heart. Yeah. Or it will take you right. because it's already got you. Right. It'll take you into deeper waters. So that time when I was like this, okay, I'm gonna let's see my mom. My mom catches it. Oh, she didn't catch it. She didn't catch it. Oh, because you're just trying the waters. You're trying the waters. Mm -hmm. Mama gonna catch it? No. Is daddy gonna catch it? No. Then I can do it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Then the time I did it, my ear got infected. Yeah. Wow. Oh, the Lord, the Lord works in mysterious ways, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, now I gotta go to the doctor for it. No, I just push it out. I'm done. I'm, I'm okay. But then I go on piercing more. Huh? It gets you. Yes. Oh, he don't know what he's talking about. Sure does. The same thing with a tattoo. Amen. Huh? Walk around hiding it. 
And then all of a sudden your mom says, hey, Stella, how you doing? Grabs your arm because you're wearing the flannel during the summer, 115 degree. You want to hide the flannel? You want to hide the tattoo? And then she slaps you right in her arm. And you're like, ah, what did you do? She tries to take the scrubber off. Why? Because you're just you're trying to take some takes a, a pumice stone or whatever wow. it is. Wow. Then you're running from her. Big boy, benching all that way. Tough guy, tattoos wow. of the game. Nope. Running from your mama trying to scratch it off with lemon and, and a thing. Wow. Because they're just trying the waters. Wow. Trying the waters. Wow. And then when you try it one time too long, the feller, mm -hmm. the trapper, yes. he gets you and Man. drags you in. Man. Then you're a prisoner. Yes. Then you're a prisoner and the only thing that can break it is the power of the Holy Ghost. The blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Man. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Oh, why do I need to learn of you? I got Google. I know everything. I can recite everything and anything to you. Doesn't Man. mean you know it. Sorry, brother. You know it here, but you don't know it here. Amen. That's the problem. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Sure. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Sure. Circumcision of the heart, number two. Come to me, and I'll give you rest. Let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus. May somebody, Lord Jesus, I'm not mad, Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I, I, I'm not mad, Lord Jesus. I'm mad for you. I'm crazy for you. But Lord, it doesn't matter what trap they're in, what circumstances that they may be caught Man. in. There is, I am offering a way out. Yep. That is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Not applying mentally, but applying into the heart. So when it comes into the heart, it prepares the way for God himself to come into the heart and sit in his place that he created within your heart. Answering the sin question, Lord Jesus, I'm asking Lord Jesus, if there's somebody here, Lord, there's somebody that is watching, Lord Jesus, may it help them, Lord. May it loose the chains of sin. May it free them from the fowler, that devil, or whatever vice they may be in, or that vice that has them. Jesus Christ is the chain breaker. He is the liberator. And where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. Heavenly Father, may you go to them, Lord Jesus, to our brothers in Pakistan, Lord, to those that are in Texas, Lord Jesus, that are watching, those that are in Mexico that are watching, Lord Jesus. Lord, may you set their souls on fire, Lord Jesus. May they be liberated. May they be healed, Lord Jesus. It does not matter what is the fowler or the trap is. Whatever name that it goes by, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, loose them, Lord Jesus, in the name of of the Lord Jesus Christ, we ask all things. Amen. secret was that I whispered to Brother Sherman. <laughs> How many want to know? I just whispered in his ear. Thank you, Sister Logan. Thank you, Sister Logan. I asked him, is the devil the fowler? He said, yes. I said, there ain't nobody fowler. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. That's right. <laughs> There's nobody worse. Than it. <laughs> Amen. It just means the fowler ones that traps fowl, right? Yes. The, the, the birds. Yes. Said traps for birds. How many know they do that? Yeah. So... What a friend we have in Jesus. Ain't nobody, ain't, there ain't no better friend than Jesus. Amen. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, our sins. 
They're just filthy, just talk filthy, just filthy, filthy. And uh, doing tech school, I had to get away from that. So I got a guitar and I bought it. I didn't have any place to play it. Guess where I went to go play it? In the restroom. Big restroom for 30, 40, 50 men. Just big restroom out by myself. And uh, I remember singing that song. Why Fred? Oh, Wow. Amen. Don't matter who says they're your friend for life. That's right. That's right. My friend J Richard Cheney, Dick Cheney, but different guy, not the <laughs> vice president. We're going to be buddies forever. Stuck three months just tight. We're tight, as they say in the world. We were very close. Pizza, just everywhere we went, we were the outballs, the outcasts. Wow. We stuck, hung around. We're going to be together forever. Wow. We're going to be buddies, huh? Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Right. Yes, sir. But there ain't no, but no friend better than Amen. Sister Let's go next stanza. Um, right. Thank you, Lord. Have we tried old temptation? I'll do the math. <laughs> Find us 
Watch these two guys tonight. Started going crazy that night. Wednesday night it just when it exploded and that preached that night. And this redeemed the number one forty. If Fanny Crosby sings this song, this writes a song notes, I think she wrote that song. I'm going to look it up tonight when I get home. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy. His child and forever I am. Redeemed. songs in the night. Yes. It's a beautiful thing to be woken up with a man. Yes, yes. You, you got to write it. It's not you. The woman who received the words of the Battle Hymn of the Republic, she, she woke, woke her up. The Lord woke her up. And the poem was just going in her mind. She said, well, I got to write it down. Man. So, yes, yes. God bless you. Man. Those are good messages. I love that. It's an invitation to a wedding. Man. Take my yoke upon me. Amen. Be my yoke partner. Be Amen. my conjugal partner. Yes. Wow. Thank you. Let us bar head. If you'd like to raise your hand and ask God for help, I have got mine up already. Amen. It's always good to hear directly from Him. So. Heavenly Father, Bye. thank you for your work tonight, Lord. <coughs> thank you. Bomb. 
Thank you. Thank you, Marcia. Bless each person here with their hands yes, raised my... out there, with their listening, watching. Touch them, Lord God. When you said that's that one, him, he, whose presence you feel right now, you'll see him face to face. There won't be no guilt there. You know, I'm always worried about that. God, can I stand Amen. before you? Be you know what? No good for nothing. How can I stand before you? Oh, Lord, thank you. Jesus. But it will be because he, you have really deemed me worthy to stand before you through your grace and not through my works. <coughs> Each one of us, I believe, feels that way, Lord. How can we stand? Yes. How in that day, without hanging our head in shame, saying, I look good. But the, our leader will be right there, taking us towards you, saying, Grace, <laughs> Grace, okay, by works. Amen. Dude. I'm going to say it like this, Lord. It ain't by works, dude. Yes. Or do that. It's by, it's not by works, by grace. I said it wrong, forgive me, Lord. But continue, Lord, blessing us, Lord, with your word and your Holy Spirit. <coughs> Cleanse our heart. I put it on the altar, Lord. Our pastor taught us many times, many years ago, he said, Watch his approach. He said, you have to go through those steps every day. Through justification, through the My. our court, back into to the inner the holy place, across the veil. <coughs> holy every day. And wait there until that until you answer with fire, Lord, from yes. above. It's a continual process of cleansing, Lord. Thank you for that. And help everybody. The sound of our voice, Lord, in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. But else you have announcements? Yeah, we'll have a meet Tuesday or Thursday. Right. Tuesday or Thursday we'll be meeting, be meeting here yes. oh. at 6 or 6.30. So, or 6. Yes. You prefer 6 or 6.30? And, and that Sunday morning we'll have the, uh, the announcement for the visitation from okay. Albuquerque, etc. All right. Okay. God bless you. Uh, and next Sunday morning, we're going to be, be hearing about their visiting speaker, guest speaker we'll be having uh, the first week of February, and then be the last week of February, and the first week of March, <laughs> if it works out with our brothers from up north. Matt. Okay. Uh, but brother, also give us a, the, um, the information then. Um, take the name of Jesus with you. Amen. Remember when you can, just sing, sing a little song during the week that yes. mentions the name of Jesus. Amen. He likes us to hear his name. Amen. Is he a man? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have one re intercessor between God and man. Amen. It's a man, Christ Jesus. Amen. Every man likes to hear his name. <laughs> the sound of his name. Especially when his bride says, Amen. Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Nothing will melt a man quicker than that. To hear his wife's <coughs> sweet voice mention, oh, mention yeah. honey, <laughs> sweetheart. <laughs> yes. It's not a one-way street. <laughs> he loves to hear his name said to him by loving lips. Not Judas lips. <laughs> kissing the world and garbage. My. Not talking, not preaching, just, just reminding you what he has already said. What of those same lips that sit on, that when she sits on your lap and you know she's been kissing out things out there in the My. world and they kiss, try to kiss your lips and say that the, they burn more than a Judas. My. Let's surrender our hearts more and more every day to the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> yes. You know, that's the only thing that's keeping us, the rapture from happening is a the bride totally turning her eyes upon Jesus. Yeah. Um, uh, take the name of Jesus with you. So. <laughs> take the name of Jesus with you. Child of 
sorrow and the woe. It will joy and comfort you. Take it then wherever you go. Precious name, oh how sweet. Hope on earth and joy of heaven. Precious name.